This is a small frame loom that we made in a previous video and we're going to use it to learn some of the very basics of weaving and all weaving has two basic parts warping and wefting and we're going to start with warping to start with warping uh, we put a loop in the warp string or the warp thread and decide where we want to start I'm going to start on the fifth peg in and loop it over just like that bring the warp streak down to the fifth peg on the bottom and come back up making a continuous loop and that gives me threads running vertically okay actually I'm not going to go so far I'm going to use a total of nine nine pegs for reasons that I'll explain later in the video or maybe in the next video uh, I prefer to have an odd number of strings so what I'm going to do is about two-thirds of the way down on this last string put another overhand knot and then because we're having to pull it down we're going to move some of these strings to give us enough slack but we want our warp to be taut and along with being taut we want it to have some even tension be very careful when you do this part that you don't cut the strings that you've warped on okay so now we use nine pegs and we have 17 17 warp threads it's decently tight now that we have our loom warped, we are going to go to the second part of weaving, which is wefting. Wefting just means placing the horizontal threads through the warp strings. We're going to literally weave the threads through the warp strings. And I'm going to start with this color. And I would like to make about 12 rows with this color. And I'm ready to start. Now, wefting itself is divided into two parts. They're called picking and beating. That's right, picking and beating. The picking is just the process of moving the threads in and out of the warp threads. And you can do it with your fingers if you like. So, I just picked my weft strings through the warp. Now the second part of wefting is beating, and beating just means moving the weft thread down to the previous weft threads. You can use your finger for that. Now, right now there are no previous weft threads, so what am I going to move it to? It's really good to have what's called a heading. A heading is something that's not intended to be part of the finished product, but that you put into the weaving before you start to give your first few weft threads a place to land. You can use a folded piece of paper, you can use a batten like this, weave it in and out. Um, but what I like to use is my light bill. Now I have a good firm base to begin my wefting on. Instead of picking with my fingers, I'm going to go ahead and use this tapestry needle. In a previous video I showed how easy it is to simply make one of these for yourself. And I'm going to come in from the right side. Now where the envelope is pushing the string down, because the envelope is over the string, I'm going to come under the string. And then over, under, over, under. This over under weaving is known as plain weave, or sometimes called tabby weave. And I'm going to leave myself a tail of about four to five inches, and I like to tuck that first tail right behind. To the second part, beating. I'm going to simply beat the thread down and this is kind of the art of tapestry weaving, getting these wefted threads correctly. I'm going to go back in the other direction and this time the threads that I went under I'll go over, the threads that I went over I'll go under and the envelope is still kind of pushing it in that direction anyway. So that makes it pretty easy. As I pull the weft through, 
I'll focus on two things. Making this edge that I came in on, avoiding pulling it, and then leaving myself a little bit of an arch. The reason for the arch is that when I beat this down, it could cause these warp strings to tighten up. And when that happens, your warping starts to get a hourglass effect. We can start to see already that the weft color is far more prominent than the warp color. When you're doing tapestry weaving, you want to use a neutral color, off-white, eggshell white, or a very light brown because the idea is to have the warp the weft strings do the talking, so to speak. The weft strings are where your design uh, will come in. In this type of weaving, tapestry weaving, the warp strings are really just uh, a framework. Going in and out one by one is very simple. It's the most simple kind of weaving, uh, but it's easy to make a mistake. It takes a lot of concentration to avoid skipping uh, a warp string. If you skip a warp string, uh, it's not the end of the world, uh, but what will happen is suddenly your, uh, your warp string will become much more visible in that particular spot. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hand pick and pull this through and I'm going to start the next color. And with that, we're ready to take the project off the loom. Now you may be asking yourself, what project? What is that supposed to be? Well, the intent was for it to be this. Another version of this, this is called a mug rug, and it is pretty much plagiarized from a much better uh, tapestry weaver than I, called Spruce and Linen. Highly recommend it. Link to her channel on the bottom. Now I'm just ready to finish.